What's up, everybody? Trinity here, and welcome back to the Second Street Marvel. We love talking about comic books, and this is New Comic Book Wednesday, and here I am in my local comic book shop, Bases, Cards, and Comics, right here. What's up everybody, Trinity here, and welcome back to the Second Street Marvel, where we love talking about comic books, and the new Comic Book Wednesday, and here I am in my local comic book shop, Bases, Cards, and Comics, right here in Lancaster, California, to present you all with my comic book pull list for the week. Now, if you don't know what a comic book pull list is, there should be a video somewhere, maybe right up here, where you can go and learn a little bit more about that, and maybe that just appeared there, because my friend Yoda here made that magically appear. Maybe he used the force... I don't know. You tell me. What do you think? Anyway, guys, go ahead and getting into my comic book pull list for the week. It is a slow week. Normally, I do Marvel, DC, and then I get into small press books. And this week, I don't have any Marvel books because Marvel didn't release any single issues. They are putting out trade paperbacks and things this week. So you can always go and check some of those out. But no single issues. But nonetheless, we're going to move right on to DC, which is the first one I've got here is Hawkman issue number 24. You guys know I don't read much DC here on the channel, but I have absolutely loved Hawkman. Great series. Robert Venditti doing a great job writing this series. I have no complaints about this. I look forward to this book every single month that it's coming out. Can't wait to get more of it. And you know what? I've really been enjoying Robert Venditti's Justice League as well. And I'm not, you, like I said, you guys follow me here long enough. You know I don't read a whole lot of DC, but hey, They've been getting a few more of my dollars, and some people almost got me convinced to go ahead and start reading Batman, too. I seen issue number, what was it, like 92, and some of the art and stuff in it, and I was kind of like, man, that, this actually looks pretty interesting. But that's all I have for my DC books this week, guys. I'm going to go ahead and get into some small press and indie publishers, and starting off with Image Comics, which some would argue they're not small press or indie, but hey. And nonetheless, we've got issue number one of A Man Among Ye. This is a new series, obviously being a number one. Never read it. Never really heard about it. I mean, just like a little bit. I think I remember covering this. Did, did we cover this on one of the previous uh, videos that we did? I can't remember. Uh, regardless, this is one of the, look, this is one of those first backs. It's got the, yeah, it's got that back to comeback label on there, guys. One of the first ones I've seen hitting the shelves that have the logo on there. So, I don't know. We'll see how this is. This is actually being written by Stephanie Phillips, who is a writer. I just recently read a book of hers that came out just last week, too. It was issue number two of Artemis and the Assassin, which is a new series on Aftershock Comics, which I thought was I thought it was a pretty decent read, actually. You should check out my review of it if it's not up here on the channel already. Make sure that you stay tuned uh, very soon. Uh, the next one is on Boom Studios Comics, guys. And this one is from James the IV. Uh, this is Wind, issue number one. Is that Wind or is that Wind? I'm not for sure. Wind or Wind? Either way, take your pick. Going to check this one out. Now, this one right here is a it's a $4.99. This is the variant cover. It's a $4.99 issue. But, guys, let me tell you. like You probably can't tell here much through the uh through the camera here but this is actually a pretty thick issue so that's why it's got that extra dollar uh tacked onto the price tag uh james tinian doing a pretty good job over at boom studios with the titles that he has been writing doing a good job he's also doing something is killing the children on boom studios very very good series i actually quite like it gonna read wind here see what this issue number one is about see how it is Pay attention to the reviews, stay tuned on the channel, make sure you're subscribed and all that stuff, and let me know what you think about Wind Issue number 1 when I get that review done. Now, the next one I've got here, guys, AWA Upshot. I've talked a little bit about them here on the channel. It's uh, basically the uh, the guy who created AWA Studios, Axel Alonso, uh, reached out to some different people, a handful of people, to come up with these projects, and they're doing this kind of post-apocalyptic type of world, and they're all kind of building their own universe over there, and I've quite enjoyed it. And this uh, issue number two of The Resistance is what I've got right here, guys. And I've got to tell you, I really enjoyed issue number one of the resistance it's one of those books that played kind of really well is well timed when it released just not well timed when it released because it happened right before the current pandemic going on affecting the world and this 
book, this series, these series of books kind of revolve around a world like that. Very similar. Strange Timing, The Resistance, issue number two. I can't wait to get into this one. Uh, I really did like the first series here. Written by J. Michael Straczynski with art by Mike Diodato Jr. And uh, Lee Lowridge is on the is on the colors on here, man. And so um, just good stuff here uh, out of this upcoming studio, so uh, comic studio. And the next one I've got is on AWA Upshot as well. And that one is, whew, what is that? Hotel, or do you want to call that Hell? Issue number two, written by John Lees. And if you haven't been following the channel here long enough, just last week on a live stream, I was talking about John Lees. He is a good writer, and he's doing a, uh, a really great series called Mountainhead over on IDW Comics. And this one right here is right up the same alley with that as far as the story is. It's a good horror story. Now, it, the, I, was, I will say the art is different here because the mountain head. It's just, it's just got a, it's different art, different stuff going on there. Really interesting. This one right here, though, <laughs> it's very good art as well. Uh, definitely some interesting stuff going on here in Hotel Hell. Can't wait to read issue number two, man. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a great series. Great series. Now, the next one I've got here, guys, is on Dynamite Comics. Dynamite Comics, and this is Death to the Army of Darkness, issue number three. Guys, and I'm sure right now my man Snow Dub Music and Entertainment is sitting there thinking just the same thing, going, yes, Death to the Army of Darkness. Did you see that new movie they're coming out with? It's woke. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But he wasn't happy about it. You should go check out his video. But anyway, Death to the Army of Darkness here. Going to continue reading this series. I believe this is a five-issue miniseries. Now, issue number one, I didn't particularly particularly like the the characterization. Of just like Ash, the way he was written, it really didn't feel like the Ash character to me that I know. Um, Ryan Parrott, though, otherwise doing, you know, I guess kind of a slapsticky, kind of fun uh, book, to, book to read here so far. Um, I don't really have big complaints other than the thing with the ash it just doesn't feel like that character to me but hey i don't know let me know down in the comments if you're reading death through the army of darkness and if you like it and what you think about it ryan parrott's not a bad writer just this characterization you know what i mean like nailing down the character itself you know when you're a fan of these things it's probably a little hard for any writer to do and i kind of feel like it's just missing a little mark a little bit here with this character but again it's not really so much focused on him a whole lot like you know what i mean like he's in the story obviously but yeah anyway moving on to the next one i've got here is on aftershock comics you guys know how much i love aftershock comics here guys uh but this one is issue number three of the man who effed up time now i just don't know how to feel about this comic book guys uh everything that's going on in here it's not ah uh, i i just don't know i don't know maybe i need to go go through and do some deeper uh, dive reviews for you guys and get some opinions from you guys and let you know you know let you so you guys can let me know what you think about this series um, altogether obviously it's about it's about this guy right here he got he goes back in in time two weeks with this time machine that he pretty much helped build and he changed one little thing in his life that led back to catastrophic events obviously you don't go around meddling with time right ma <sighs> Man, I'm telling you, you just shouldn't do it. But anyway, guys, that is all I have for my comic book pull list this week. I want to know, what do you have on your comic book pull list? And what of these books would you like to see me do some more in-depth reviews on? I'll be doing some reviews on these regardless. But is there any of these that you'd like to, me to do, uh, dive into a little bit more, tell you a little bit more what's going on? I don't know. Give me some feedback in some of my comic book reviews. If you want me to go a little bit more spoilery or just anything like that. Let me know down in the comments below on any of those videos. The feedback really does help me improve some of the videos as I've been trying to change some of the format of some of them to make them pop a little bit better, make them look a little bit better for you guys. Okay, guys, so that's all I've got for my comic book pull list. We're going to go ahead and get in here to the rest of the show and see what you all have to say about some of these comic books. How are you all doing? How's it going, everybody? I hope everybody is doing well today. Uh, yeah, I got out and uh, got to into my local comic shop and uh, got that got that video shot and I got home just that quick. Did you see how good that was? You know what? Give me just a second, guys. Let me let me draw this shade right here. See, because it helps. I mean, I don't know. 
maybe it's just me, but I think that helps it make, make, does that look a little bit better? No, no, no. Anyway, I hope you're all having a very good day, and it is new comic book Wednesday, and guys, if you're, you have a local comic book shop near you, and they are open, make sure you get out and check out some awesome comic books. I want to say what's up to everybody we have in the chat today, and if you're here, please do me a favor, make sure that you hit that like button, you know what I mean? Just, um, just, just help us, you know what? The Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. keep trying to bury us in that YouTube algorithm. Help us destroy and smash the Stark Sham. Hail Hydra. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Anyway, what's up, everybody? We got uh, the LB from the Lonely Banter. And man, I can't wait until tonight, guys, when me and LB are going to be going blow for blow, duking it out. Mono and mono. Well, I don't know. I guess Adam's going to be in there probably tossing in his two cents every now and again. You know, trying to look as good as this bald man right here. But you can't do it, Adam. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bruh. You see see how I did that? How I kind of mixed it? Bruh? I can't do it as good as LB. Bruh? Bruh. Bruh. That's all I'm... You know what? Yeah. Thank you guys for being here. Fan Jexter, Star Wars, Santa. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys... Tonight on Debate 8, and it is going to be a good time. x Arcoon, thank you so much for being here. And guys, can you do me one favor, Fanjecture, if you're here, make sure that you drop a link to your stream down in the comment section, and make sure that you drop a link to your channel, because if you're here on this chat, you need to go to Fanjecture's channel and subscribe. And then make sure you click on the video, and make sure you hit that little bell button. For one, on his channel when you subscribe, but... Hit that reminder so you get that reminder for tonight's debate eight so we can see me and lb probably we're gonna tell you guys what way to vote we're gonna we're gonna tell you the right way to vote and don't worry guys tonight i don't think i'm gonna get clerks tooed but i do <laughs> for some reason i have a feeling <laughs> i have a feeling that adam's gonna get gumped i have a feeling he's gonna get gumped again Again, how does it feel, Adam? Oh, man, I love watching those debate eights and watching Adam get gumped. Oh, man, it's good. I'm telling you guys, it's a good time. You guys should make sure that you make it there because it's always, the more people that are there, the funner it is. Okay, guys, sorry, I'm, get, I'm getting a little too into that. Harvey Mirrorless, thank you so much for being here. Den of Nerds is in the building. What is up, my brothers? Had a good conversation over there on the Den of Nerds this morning talking about these Dang, spoiled NBA players getting to watch the Black Widow movie before us. It's preposterous. It's preposterous. I don't know why they would do such things. You know what? Can we... There we go. Let's, let's move that in a little bit. Let's move that in a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um... Let's see, fan uh Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to crush it. It's going to be a good time. Mike Porter is in the building. Captain Pennsylvania. Uh, Alois is in the building. How are you doing? Maverick Pilgrim is the chat. <laughs> is the chat child's grandfather? Oh, is the chat child's grandfather? Is the. Oh, is it, what do you mean? Oh, the Yoda? Yeah, Yoda. Yeah. Yeah, you guys like Yoda in there? Yeah, Yoda's legit. Adio 2887. OP slash. Thank you for being here. Steve Denton is in the house. Tom, uh, Dominic. Oh. Dominic Omega oh, Omega Omegon 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 I just want a good issue of Heroes Reborn Captain America number one a good issue of Heroes Reborn Captain America number one never heard of it I don't know and no that's not a fanny pack Adam it's not a fanny pack it's well maybe it is it's a, it's a medieval fan fanny pack it's from, because I, I got this during the Renaissance Fair. At the Renaissance Fair, you know, you put it on your little thing. And you, yeah, I guess it is. You know, you, because typically, you know, you can, wear, you can wear it up here up front or you can wear it in the back too. So I guess it would be by your, your fanny. So yeah, I guess, hey, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a fanny pack from the Renaissance days. Yeah. See, and you open it up. You know, somebody like yourself would probably keep your little cell phone in there. Maybe your little chapstick. But me? I keep money. <laughs> I use it for my business. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Yoda, look, Yoda look ashy. Needs some lotion. Yeah, yeah. Probably so. Probably so. 
Yeah, I've been quarantined in the in the in the comic shop. XR Coon, thank you for being here. Uh, Mike Porter says Yoda, or as I like to call it, Trinity's mini me. <laughs> Star Wars Santa says the anti-hero. <clears throat> oh, what? Which which one? What? What? What do we? Oh, Batman. Oh yeah, we're talking about. Ooh, I see where you're going there, Santa. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Um. I'd sleep there. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, heck yeah. Wayne White, thank you for being here. Uh, let's see, who else we got in the building? Um, I feel like everyone is here from the... Yeah, they are, man. Everybody... We're all we're all jumping streams. You know, we all start off every single morning. We start, we all start off every single morning. What God, what is that? 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern Eastern Daylight Time. We all start over there on Fanjecture, and then we jump over to the Den of Nerds, and then we go here pretty soon. I'm sure pretty soon there's going to be somebody that's going to be coming in right after I end in about an hour. So soon enough, there's going to be you're going to have your whole morning lineup, and all you got to do is follow the change. Just follow. Just all you got to do is change the channel to the next to the next station. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. Isn't it great? It's great. And besides, I mean, also you could always take a break. When my show is here, you could always take a break and wait. Uh, at nine th at nine thirty. Well, that's nine thirty my time. Uh, JB from Discovery Bay Comics goes live at uh, nine thirty a.m. You know, so yeah, hey, there you go. <clears throat> I hear the NBA players get the comics early. Ooh, don't you dare, Maverick Pilgrim! That's not even funny. I personally came from my mother and father. <laughs> oh, the man who left up time. I'll check it out. Um, yeah, it's okay. It's all right. It's only a little, you could, at, at this point, you could wait for the trade and you'd be all right. RC Scott, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> How dare you interrupt Death Metal Wednesday. Yeah, looks like a fanny pack to me. <laughs> oh, man, ready to get mad tonight? Yeah. Yeah, Death Metal Wednesday, huh? Yeah, man, Um, I didn't get a chance to read that yet. I didn't get a chance to read that yet. You can't say fanny on, oh, Ooh, demon! I can't say Fanny. Uh, believe me, some of the stuff I've said on YouTube, <laughs> shit, yeah. Fanny's probably the least of my worries. I know I'm terrible. Who carries cash on them anymore? Probably the same people who collect DV DVDs. You know what, Fanjecture? Um, probably people who run their own business and don't work for the man. Don't work for the man. The patriarchy. Like you do. Don't act like you don't, Adam. I know what you do. You told me what you do. Don't act like you don't know what you do. You might as well be Harvey Weinstein himself. I'm kidding. I'm that was that was that too far? Was that too far? I'm just that was all just a joke. That was just a joke. Adam's a good dude. I like Adam. Even though I have to disagree with him at times. Did you guys see that debate yesterday over on the Den of Nerds Live? Well, it was the Den of Nerds main channel, but you know what I'm talking about. Man, that was good. I liked it. I thought that was a good stream. Uh, anyway, um, but yeah, yeah, no, I run my own business, so I've got to have, yeah, uh, so I've got to have, uh, I've got to have cash with me. i got my little card reader, that thing right there, you know, you put your little card right in there, put your little card in there, or you could tap your phone on there, you can tap your phone on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I woke early to catch Adam today. Hell yeah. Nice, nice. He owes me tonight. Ooh, dang. Ooh, man. <laughs> man, I, you know what, Captain Pennsylvania? I'm not gonna even look into that statement whatsoever. I'm got, not gonna make any innuendo out of what you just said right there. Um, I'm not sure if we're going stucky here, or would this be called... Statum. Would it be Statum? I don't know. Either way. What you just said there, Cap. It's a little too homoerotic for my morning show. But that's okay. Because we've got a little bit more that we're going to address about things just like that here in just a minute. Um, <clears throat> No one came on my stream. What stream, LB? I didn't even say, what stream? You, what stream? What stream? I won't be going live anytime soon, but my channel is just starting. Nice, nice, Wayne. Nice, Wayne. You, d Wayne, you need to make sure that you send me your channel link because YouTube's stupid and it won't let me click your thing and let me just go there. But send me your channel link so I can make sure I get subscribed, dude. 
Hey Trinity, what uh, six spider people do you want to see in Spider Verse Two that we have not seen yet? Um, Kane, Armored, uh, Actor, Mech, Twenty Ninety Nine, and Knight. Um, Spider Verse. You know what? Uh, for one, we got to get Spider Man. We got to get Spider Man. Um, you know what? My kids would love to see. Um, they, they love they love that Penny Parker. You know, so like they like they got they got it covered there. Uh, I would love to see Spiders man spiders man spider not spider man spiders with an s spiders man super sci-fi type of stuff would be very great like invisible invisible man sci-fi horror kind of stuff kind of good stuff uh let's see who else is there um i honestly i can't i can't really think of uh a whole lot, a whole lot of others. It's been a while since I read since I read some of that stuff, because um, I because la last year was it last year I read the um, the Spider Geddon and there was a lot of pretty cool characters in there as well. And that's two of them. Um, you can't say Weinstein on YouTube. Jesus, that I'm I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. Dang man, that that was that bad. Was that that bad? I, I'm sorry, dude. Like. That, that was okay. That might have that might have been going a little bit far. That might have been going a little bit far. Unstoppable cockblocker in the house <laughs> says, uh, "You'll need a special uh, pokeball to catch Adam." <laughs> I meant Death Metal Wednesday, as this is when I blast Death Metal at work. Uh, forgot the comic was coming out today. Oh, okay. Cash is the uh, the way to go all the time. Cap is laughing. R C F E S. He knows, but you, but you looked at it, so you read it. Spoiler alert, Batman 89 not winning. Yeah, right, guys? Yeah, spoiler alert, Batman 89 not winning. I'll tell, you know, and I, and I hate to say this, spoiler alert, but, <laughs> spo <laughs> I really hate to tell you this one, though. <laughs> Seriously though, but uh spoiler It's not winning. Oh man. <clears throat> totally not winning. Um yeah. You can't say more oh man, no more dang it! I'm pizza delivery dude by day and at night I'm a comic reviewing nerd. Nice, nice. That sounds like a superhero. Like, a pizza delivery dude by day, and a comic nerd by night. But, what I do when I'm done reading my comics after I read the latest issue, I hit the streets. Cap doesn't receive passes, he takes him. Forgot about the mask, but I shared the link and smash. Author Stephen Walton, thank you so much for being here. Um, when are you giving away that new PS5? <laughs> oh, have you ever read Marvel's Legion crossover from the late 80s? No, I have not. Okay, guys. But yeah, sorry, guys. Uh, so, sorry. I'm glad. I'm glad we didn't get too far into the whole Cap Adam thing. That was pretty funny, though. Uh, but yeah, I did. I don't read a whole lot of DC, but I did end up picking up uh, the Dark Knight's Death Metal uh, as well. I went ahead and picked this up because I for, I forgot. I forgot this was coming out. And uh, yeah, I was. I was there at the comic shop and like, hey, you know, you getting this one? I was like, you know what? I probably should get that one. I don't read much DC, but you know what? I've already said right here on this channel that DC, at a time when comics weren't coming out, what did they do? They went and they were releasing comic books on digital, giving me something to read. Yes, even me who don't read a whole lot of DC, giving me stuff to read. So you know what? I, to I told you guys on this show, I've said in videos that, you know what? DC, you gave me comic books. I don't care how much people are mad at you that you're deciding to go, <coughs> excuse me with a different distributor for your comics or anything. I don't care that people, that you're that, that you're shaking up the industry a little bit. Oh, and then Marvel's, oh, they're sending, they're sending back their own little jabs at you because they're little variant covers. I don't care about any of that stuff. You know what I mean? DC gave me some books to read at a time when I needed new books to read. They gave me some and I read them. And I'm gonna read Dark Metal and I told you guys, I'm gonna support DC a little bit more, a little bit more. I didn't say that I was going to pull back my support of Marvel, did I? No. I just said that I'm going to give them a little bit more. Plus, this also sounds like something cool. You know, people, they've had a road leading up to this. People have been talking about it. And I was like, 
eh, we'll get it and we'll talk about it. Maybe we'll talk about this on tomorrow's stream because I saved this one for last. I haven't read this issue yet, but from what I heard, it's pretty good. I did read Hawk. I did read Hawkman. Hawkman, very good. Uh, once again, a very good book. Uh, I, I looked into some stuff about this book because I don't know the Hawkman character very well, especially when it comes to Hawkwoman. I had to look into, guys, for when I do this comic review. Hawkwoman, is that woke? Is she one of those characters the characters that they brought in and they just gender swapped with their whole liberal agenda in the comic? You know, you know how the comic book people are. And No, no, she was actually created at the same time that Hawkman was. Didn't know that. Pretty cool. And uh, just finding some of the stuff that I found out, I'm like, I need to go back and read. You know, go back and get some trades and stuff of some old Hawkman stuff and read, uh, learn learn a little bit more about the character because I like what's going on in this book. Robert Venditti doing a hell of a job. But, okay, guys, one of the ones I wanted to talk about here because we were sitting here talking about, we were talking about Adam and him punishing Cap today. This new issue right here, uh, Wind on Boom Studios Comics. This book right here is being written by James Tinian IV. I believe he's writing, what is he writing over there at DC? Is it Bat? No, it's not Batman. Is it, what's he writing? He's writing something. If you guys know, go ahead and uh, make sure, you know, let, let me know down there in the comments because I, I won't. I won't pretend to know which series it is that he's... I know he's writing something over there. But this book right here is about this kid, and this is his name. Wind. Is that wind or is that wind? What do you think? Is that wind or wind? I don't know. But Boom Studios right here, Boom Studios, they've been doing a really good job on their books. I like their books. A lot of the books that I've read out of their... Out of their uh, publishing company have been really good they do the power rangers they do buffy they do firefly they do all those kinds of different books like that and they've been doing some pretty good uh some pretty good titles out out of there so this one uh starts off we get introduced to this this elf here um who is probably i'm i'm guessing at this point um probably having a wet dream <laughs> can i say that on youtube without being demonetized so he's having this, he's having this nightmare and, uh, you know, this girl ends up going to wake up and he ends up, you know, he's like, oh, he's this beast. Ah! And he wait, he wakes up and he's all crazy and she beats, and she beats the hell, she beats the hell out of him. Um, so it's pretty crazy. And then uh, he ends up waking up from his little, from his little dream. And he goes, and he goes to work in this kitchen, but he has to cover up his ears because uh, because he's an elf and nobody he don't want anybody to know he's an elf. He has to fit in because people don't like the elves. The peoples the people the peoples don't like the elves. The peoples don't like the elves. And then and then you know he works in this he works in this place that looks a lot like hey you ever been to like Disneyland or whatnot and gone on gone on gone into uh, like the Mad Hatters or whatnot. I can't, I think it was the Mad Hatters place where you go in there and you eat like it looks it looks like that. It looks like that inside. They, they're serving up the food right there. That's how they serve it up. They got like these little water portals that take it up to the people's uh, up to the people's uh, seats and everything. I don't know. I don't know. So then we can see this uh, this lady there, that, and he, they live above this above this restaurant. This kid does, and it seems like he's like maybe an orphan, and he's kind of living in like maybe not a halfway house, but like, maybe like a, what do they call those? You know, like a, I, w I wouldn't know what they would call. You know, like the I don't know. I don't know what they call those, but anyway, they're all sitting there. Living, they're all living there together, kind of a little community of people. And uh, this kid, this kid is hiding out because he's an elf. This lady that runs this bar uh, knows it, but this kid's working there in the kitchen as well. And they're in there having this conversation, and all of a sudden we get we get introduced to we get introduced to this character, uh, the, this character here uh, in the story. And who is he? He's a uh, He's a drunk hick, man. <laughs> you know what they need to do, man? It's them gosh dang weird bloods. Them gosh dang weird bloods out there, man. You know what? We can't let them into our town because they're weirdies. You know, and them people with them pointy ears, them weird bloods. You know, I heard. I heard that the man in the bandages is coming to get them all. So she goes to check on the. 
she goes to check on the little, on the elf guy and you know he's out there wind is out there checking out on the town you know he's like man look at that and you can see the town you can see they got the little the little castle there and everything you see over here they got like billboards and stuff like that so as as like it's kind of medieval they all, like you know like like you know like a fantasy tale you know taking like you know it's, it's funny they have like these billboards and stuff it's like i don't know where they got freeways here too <laughs> it's just kind of funny so then we see we see him just kind of sitting there on his lunch looking out about the town because the guy the the cook at the restaurant said oh yeah he sneaks off every day about this time takes off for you know an hour or two he's usually back after the lunch ready for uh ready to go with the cooking and everything and then we see he's there spying on the town What's he looking at? Why, hello, Wind. It's good to see you again. Oh, hi. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. So he's sitting there, uh, creeping on this on this dude running running through the garden. Uh, this dude, you know, he's all he's all in this dude in his man sweat, right? And then and then he sees uh, the guy the guy there. Uh, and this is the guy. I can't remember what they call him. Uh, we'll get to that. <laughs> but you know, it's it's all kind of funny. So the 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 guy that he's spying on. Then then we flash to his life. Uh, what he's got going on. He goes uh, to his father, who is a gardener, who kind of tends to these crops and everything that's going on, uh, that, that are there in the town. They make the uh, town look nice. There's uh, fruit gardens and things like that. And his son is telling him, you know, basically like, you know, one of these days, this is going to be your job to tend to all these things. <clears throat> and he's talking about these, uh, uh, what are they called? Sprittles? Um... And these spriddles that he has to keep out of the garden, um, none of them have come up. And uh, basically, uh, they're, they're these things right here. And what he has to do is he has to trim it and kill it. These things are not to exist. They look cute, but they're dangerous. They, uh, they taint you with its weirdness, its wildness, its magic. So he trims it, he kills it, and... His son is horrified. He can't believe what's going on there. So then uh, we, we see the, the, the servant of the prince of, you know, you know, obviously the servant of the king uh, coming uh, and he would be, I guess he would be the servant of the prince here, uh, is, is sent to, uh, to, pick up this, to pick up this young man. He's, he's summoned uh, to get him right here. And uh, he's being called to go see the prince. The prince wants to uh, wants to see him, and uh, you know, so the, so the the kid goes to get dressed, and the father is sitting there having a little conversation uh, with with his son um, b before he leaves. Uh, you know, kind of telling him like, you know, uh, son, I know what's going on here, and no matter what happens, you're you're going to be basically taking over doing what we do here. This is what our family does. But no matter what's going on with you right now basically i'm not stupid uh the prince is the prince and you're always going to be you like you're not going to be good enough we're basically peasants and he's the prince don't ever forget that and so he so uh the the uh the, the his son goes to, goes to see this prince and he's sitting there and he, uh, he gets there to meet, to meet the prince at the castle. They got some paintings of him up on the walls and everything. And he gets there to meet the, and he gets there, uh, to meet the prince who is sitting there dreading what's going on right now. Because, uh, right now they've got this, uh, God, what do they, what do they call him? Um, uh, <laughs> he, he tells him, he tells his friend, welcome to my den of misery. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're talking about uh, the blood laws here. Uh, how the how the uh, basically the those what ones we were talking about earlier, the weird bloods. Uh, they they have they have these laws against these people being in the area. And this guy in the bandages is is being sent there to this town to make sure uh, that nothing's going on because there's this rumor going around that uh, this the prince's uncle is coming to usurp the power in the town because his father is sick and near his death and if he finds out that is that his father well if he finds out that his father is sick and that near death he's going to come to going to try to come to town to usurp the power but he's trying to get um the son here out of town 
um, so they can, so he can take that power. And this and this kid don't want the power anyway because uh, he hates he hates what his father's doing and all of these kinds of things uh, like that. And he's sitting here uh, talking to his friend, alluding to their relationship, asking if he can trust him, knowing that he is in this strange relationship with him. And he wants to know if he can trust him. And he's questioning, like, hey, can I trust you? And the guy's like, what? like, are you kidding me? Of course you can trust Like, what? Like, what, what, are you, what are you talking about? What's going on here? Um, <laughs> obviously, we can see in this book, it's, you know, it's got LGBTQ representation and everything in here. I got to be honest with you, the book itself, like, <laughs> it was hilarious. It had me laughing. <laughs> I couldn't even be mad when I started reading this book, uh, because the way it was presented, everything that happened, I like, I was like, I was just laughing when when I turned the pages. The little elf was sitting there, you know, the little elf kid. Wind was sitting there, you know, with his little binocular, and I was just like, oh man, I was like, all right, like, <laughs> the guys are super flamboyant in here. It's hilarious. Uh, I was laughing. Um, I'm probably not gonna continue reading this series. It's definitely it's. That's not something I'm, that I'm into uh, want to re uh, reading uh, th that I'm into reading. But it wasn't a bad issue if you're wanting something like that with LGBTQ representation uh, and things like that. We could see a lot of that stuff going on, and I think this actually opens up opens us up to what could be a very interesting story going on here. But uh, yeah, I don't know. All I know is I got done reading this book, and I was laughing. <laughs> It had it had it had me laughing. Uh, again, not not a bad book if that's something that you're into. Definitely, um, definitely worth checking out if that's what you want. Uh, if that's what you're into. Now to contrast that, over on Image Comics, as I was saying earlier, we, we got this one right here. This first one with our back the comeback. Our comeback will be greater will be bigger than our setback. Oh man, that's that showed you how terrible my camera is, didn't it just now? Um, but this one is being written by Stephanie Phillips. This is a female-led pirate book. And, yeah, it's ta we're, we're here talking about, oh man, what's, what's, the, what's, the, what's the guy's name here? Calico Jack. Calico Jack Sparrow. Oh, I mean, Roth, Rothlessberger. Roth, 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 Roth. I don't know, but it's a pirate story, and you know, and and Captain Jack Sparrow. I mean, I mean Jack. Dang it! I see how I keep messing that up. Um, and it's not like it's not like a like a gender swap thing. Like they didn't put this chick in there instead. But what they do is they have this uh, female pirate who is on this ship with these guys who are very much like the Pirates of the Caribbean, and they're. Cruising the Caribbean, that's where our story opens up at, is in the Caribbean. Yeah. The Caribbean. Um, yeah, it's a very, very kind of funny, and we see here uh, what's going on in this story is that this this captain of this of this ship, they're they're out there pillaging and doing what they do, you know what I mean? And they they go out on the on the ship and they destroy it, kill all the people inside, they burn it to the ground as they're leaving. And um, this uh, this kid let me see this kid here that sneaks the sneaks on board. Uh, the, the sneaks the sneaks on board the ship. Uh, we see uh, that you know ends up creeping on the ship. You know and ends up getting found out uh, that that she that she's on the ship by all all the pirates that are there. And we get a little bit of uh, this story about this uh, this governor in this town that obviously don't like that do not like the pirates and wants to see them all die and see them all hanged. I know what you're thinking, right? I know what you're thinking. You're thinking like, you know what? This sounds kind of like Pirates of the Caribbean. Well, what happens is the crew here of this ship is thinking about mutiny. We can see a couple of the guys there talking about wanting to overthrow Captain Rothlesberger. Rothlesberger. Rackham. 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 Rackham? Rackham. Rackham. I'm telling you, you can't make this stuff up, or you can. But we can see that he has a, he has a relationship with this uh, this female pirate that that is notorious. Uh, she's she's pretty well known. 
She's no, she's a notorious pirate as well. And they get together and they bump uglies and stuff. And the crew, they don't like it. They're ready to overthrow him because he pays more attention to her than, than he does them. He was never like this before. It would sound like they're almost saying like he's pee-whipped. Um, very funny story. And then here at the end of the book, we actually get the, uh, 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 this, this, uh, this story right here from uh, Stephanie Phillips, the writer, talking about this tale about this supposed pirate that existed saying that it's a myth maybe it's not we don't really know there are there are accounts of her out there but there aren't but there are but there aren't i don't know I thought it was kind of funny the whole time I was sitting there thinking like, obviously this sounds like Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, I don't think that I'm going to continue reading this one. Um, like I said, it, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't bad. It was just, okay. Seemed like it's a, seemed like it was a pirate's book, the Pirates of the Caribbean. But I mean, you know, it's, that's kind of what she talks about here uh, in, in the fact that she's uh, from Florida. And she lives in that area there near uh, Tampa Bay and how like being uh, into pirate culture is kind of what they do by default because of the area that they live in. So I don't know. Uh, I thought it was I thought it was kind of funny. It was it was a funny take um, on, on this whole thing. The art in the book, the art in the book was actually pretty decent as well. So again, if you're if you're wanting, you know, one of these comic books and uh, there's a little bit more to the story here as we've seen that, that, that the kid that snuck aboard the ship is actually a female uh, and supposedly like another another pirate and um this these two female pirates may or may not have had a relationship together there might be some lgbtq representation in this too right maybe maybe not we don't know right that's what's explained in the book you got to read it to find out you guys want me to do a more in-depth review on this or wind let me know. I can do them. That's what I'm here for, guys. That's what you come to my channel for. For me to, to review things like this and be honest with you about what's inside of them to let you know if you want to read them or not. And I'm telling you, these two right here have LGBTQ representation in them. Does that make them bad books? No. Does that mean they have agendas in them? No. These are actually pretty decent. They were pretty decent reads. Like I said, um, Wind, it, it had me... It had me <laughs> It had me laughing. I was I was laughing when I got done with it. I was laughing. I was laughing. I I don't know. Maybe it was, maybe it's kind of like watching uh what what's that show that used to come on? I I don't know. I never watched it. Well, I mean I I can't say I never watched. It. I think I watched an episode of it. I was like I can see why people would watch it. But that that queer ride for the straight guy. I can see why people would watch it. It was fun. It was a funny show. This that's kind of how I felt after after reading this ep th this issue. I was kind of <laughs> like that's funny. Like not for me, but it was funny. A man among ye, female one, I, you know, same same kind of thing. They're they're obviously uh, this this one's obviously you know playing on you know the pirates thing and ah, I don't know. I thought it was funny. I thought it was uh I thought I thought it was kind of not as, not as funny as the other one, but it's a decent book. Now the other one I got here is the man who effed up time. This one right here is about this guy who goes back and uh, goes back two weeks in his life and kind of messes everything up, messes up time. Yeah. Uh, Abraham Lincoln ends up becoming a dictator, an evil dictator. Okay, so let's get back here into the chats and see what you all are saying. Um, sorry, I've, I've been sorry. I've, I've, I nerd. I was nerding out there on comic books. Plus that, <laughs> come on, let's let's admit it. The comic book was hilarious. I'm telling you, the way it was set up, like I wasn't even mad. And guys, like for me, and that's that's what I'm here for, guys, to review these comic books for you guys. Cause, so you don't have to go out there and read them if you don't want to read something like that. If you don't want a comic book with LGBTQ representation, hey, you could probably check it out here and be like, hey, what about this book? Oh, okay, yeah, he reviewed it. Oh, okay, yeah. Th that's what I'm here for. That's what you come to this channel for. For these indie comic book reviews. And my my, my thoughts on this, guys, are, you know, these, this is obviously uh, some titles that people are doing their own thing with. You do what you want to with that. You know what I mean? You do what you want to with that. I'm okay with that. You know, you got, got whatever characters you want in the world, you put them in there and you build the story up that way. That's fine because that's the world you're setting it in. That's what that's what you're doing. You know, but going and, you know, I know what upsets most people is when we get our classic uh, characters like Marvel and DC are basically the people who have this problem is the, the changing of the characters, whether it's race, race swapping or gender swapping. 
We know a lot of people don't like that. And honestly, really, it's unnecessary when you can actually go out there. You can actually go out there and make great books and write great stories and build great worlds with uh, without, you know, without changing classic characters. You can go out and build new worlds. It can be done. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that here in just a minute. Let's get here back into the live chat and see what everybody is saying about these books. And I'm telling you, I think that book was funny. It was, it was making me laugh. Um, let's see. Showback TJC, thank you so much for being here. Says you handsome devil, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Should I, should I smooth out my voice a little bit? Make it a little bit better for you? Um, thank you so much for being here, Shellback. Uh, R.C. Scott, yeah, it's good reading if you're into reading older stuff. Oh, I must have missed, I must have missed that one. Don't laugh about, uh, the get-overs, Cap. <laughs> the get-overs. Oh, man. They put her out at the same time. Um, it's Batman, I think. I must have missed something there. It's pronounced wind. Okay, it's pre Gotcha. I gotcha, Maverick. Good, good. Good deal. He's writing Detective Comics last I checked. Okay, Detective Comics, is that what Tinian's writing? I knew, I thought it was a Batman title of sorts. Okay, yeah, yeah. I can't say dream on, can't say dream on YouTube. <laughs> what dream and Harvey Weinstein in the same stream? Yeah, the algorithm gonna shut you down. I know, right? Like, they've got it picked out, like, they, this, this has probably already been shut off. Like, I don't even know it yet, because I'm that far on the back in the chat. <laughs> oh, man. Um... City could pretend to be Spock's relative instead. Um, I stopped typing with my work clothes on. Good morning, Irish. How are you doing today? Ooh, I st Irish, I've got that package I'm getting ready to send out to you. Got that package. Well, not especially Batman uh, origin. It, it does tackle uh, Burton's take on the Joker origin. So for the city, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's an origin because it's the starting of a new franchise, if you will. I think for that reason, it's an origin. Yeah. Um, you do a nice impression of Cletus the slack child yokel. <laughs> yeah, that would, um, yeah. We're not going to talk about that. Trinity, the man of 74 voices. <laughs> that voice impression. Is that Hush? <laughs> it sounds like a variety show uh, act. Yeah. Yeah. LB says, I got clout. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to, yeah, I don't think it's going to win either. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Watch Critters 3 last night. Nice, nice. You stop watching movies uh, that I liked as a kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am True Skills. Thank you for being here. Um, stay away from Ariel. Apparently, why does Hush have a cameo in Wind? <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, representation makes everything amazing. <laughs> RC Mo representation. Downright nerdy, nerdy podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Killer clowns from outer space. I haven't seen that forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's been a while. What what the f is happening in Florida? <laughs> he having a stroke? Florida. I just sent you a Facebook message with a link to my review on the chat. Okay, nice, nice. All right. Trinity had to ice down an erection after. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, that's cracking me up, man. Why does it? Is that is that a little loud? That seems like that's a little loud. Okay. Okay, is that better? There we go. Okay. I'm not sure the settings on here must have went weird. It seems like the like my audio is just a little bit loud. Let always guys please always let me know if my audio is a little loud or something. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. That's funny, Mark. He's had to ice down that erection after reading wind. That was funny. I come for the head shaving and moisturizing tips. I'll do some of those. I'll do some of those. Same here. Same here, Adam. It's hard being bald and beautiful. Yep. Yep, it's the, yeah, like, I make it look easy. You want Instagram cap? Yeah, yeah, cap's on IG. No, you don't create new characters, you just, uh, you just make them black or, okay, all right, take the, just, just swap their existing ones. I hate to see gays and blacks in my comics, I just want good old American boys, says just a slob. Yeah, hey, you know, and that's, and just a slob, that's why you come here to my channel, so I can let you know if this is something you want to read or not. And I can tell you, if that's all you want, if that's what you want in your comic books, I will guarantee you that um, not um, a man among ye and uh, and wind are books you don't want to read. You won't want to read these. 
And that's, that's what you're here for, for me to tell you that you don't want to read these because that's not what you want to read. So I'll just give you, I'll tell you that much right here. And hey, you know what? Just a slob. Obviously, that's why you're here. Obviously, that's why you're here. Right? Yeah. Um, I have, <laughs> but yeah, and here's the thing is like, I don't mind seeing gays and blacks in comics. It's just like, how, how are you doing it? You know, what's, you know, what, what's the place? I mean, obviously, I mean, black people are in the real world. If you're making a comic book based in the real world, obviously there's black people in it. Um, and obviously there's gay people in it. But, you know, the, the focus and what, what, like, how does it pertain to the story and how is it interjected is really what a lot of people um, have more uh, uh, problems with when it comes to those kinds of things. Uh, and for me, I think that that's really what it comes down to is the writing. Is can the writing make it good and interesting? I read a book last year by Anne Nocenti called, uh, or is it Nocenti? Is it Nocenti? Nocenti? Um, called ruby falls it's on dark horse comics it was a pretty good book it was actually a pretty interesting book and the main character in it she was a lesbian and you know what throughout the whole book she didn't go shoving in your face that hey i'm a lesbian it was just she just happened to be in a lesbian relationship she had a girlfriend and you know there was things that in the story that kind of revolved around that but None of it was done in a bad way. It was well written. And from what I take it, I heard Innocenti actually wrote some Spider-Man back in the day. Hmm. I may have to go back and read some of that. But yeah, I have no problem with that stuff in the comic books. Like, I just want it to be well written. You know, I just, it just got to, you know, because I've seen books that even with things that aren't, don't have representation and stuff like that in them. That I've seen books that are just like not well written. I'm just kind of like, what is this? So it's not even it's not even really when it just comes to those kinds of things neither. Um, I guess have, uh, what shampoo do you use? Oh me yeah me um I just use I just use body wash I use body wash yeah I don't use bars of soap I don't use bars of soap a man puts hair on your chest bars of soap no I use body wash and a loofah yeah I use a loofah. And I scrub my underarms like that, like all jolly. And I get my bag. Sometimes I say to my wife, I say, honey, honey, could you come scrub my back for me? Head shaving tips? Let's collab, Second Street Marvel. I know, right? Let's, let's, do, yeah, we can do it. I'll tell you one thing. If you want it to be shiny and nice looking, you gotta do it probably about every other day, every other second day, like every, you get, yeah, you gotta, you gotta stay on it. Okay, Captain, I'll hit you. Yeah, yeah, hit him up. Hit him up. Hit him up. If I shave my head completely bald, I'd look like Jason Voorhees without a mask. Nice, nice. Gotta bounce. Uh, all right, take it, take it easy, Harvey. Have a good day. Um, later Harvey, uh, we just want good writing. You can have diversity and representation with good writing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Irish. Well, and cause that's, that's what I, I'm, that's what, that's what I say. Like in the real world, that's the real world we live in. And if you're writing a comic book based in the real world, that's the world we live in. Right? Right? I think for the one, one thing I noticed is like, it's when you kind of like, shove it in people's faces and you have to constantly remind people but the best story i've got for that is i've got a good friend uh he he does like background acting and stuff in movie uh movies and tv shows he does a lot of that but uh he he, he likes ellen degeneres and he's like dude i love ellen he's like i don't care if she's she, that she's a lesbian or anything like i don't care about that when she came out i don't care it's not a big deal you know, it's, it's, you know, like we, it's not like we didn't know, you know, it was no big deal. And he's like, but the thing was like when she was doing her show, like every show revolved around that and every single show had to come, you know, had to go, have this long ongoing joke about her being a lesbian. All just like, he's like, it just got to be too much. He's like, it's not that I dislike the show. It's just like every single time it's like you're taking the bush and you just keep beating it. And then, and then the bush is eventually a dead dog. See what I did there? And, um, and then you just keep beating and he's like, he's like, it just got old. He's like, I don't have any problem with it, but he's like, come on. Like, that's like, that's not what I came here for. I came here for you and the show for what it, for what it is and was not just this, you know, like, you know, 
And so yeah, I mean, it's 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 all about good writing, and we see there's been there's there's I mean endless examples where people have done it in writing and it works out just fine. You know what I mean? It works out just fine. Y'all tripping adding representation is good writing. No, no, no. At not not adding representation because the representation like and that's what I'm saying. Like if like if it's being placed in the not like not like just interjecting it like race swapping Captain America and all that kind of stuff. No, you shouldn't do that. But in a comic book that has Captain America in there, there happens to be black people in it. Oh what? 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 There's people in there that are, you know, like, and that's the thing is it's not, it's, the story doesn't revolve around that. You know what I mean? That's the thing. It doesn't revolve around that. Where we can see in this story, Wind, it does revolve around that. You know what I mean? You want to do that in your own comic book, in your own world? That's, that's your world. That's your comic book. That's like somebody coming to my YouTube channel and telling me that I can't do videos about Robert Meyer Burnett being canceled by John Campia and Christian Harloff. And you call me a clickbaiter. It's okay to use a loofah. Okay, it's okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Shellback. I appreciate that. I appreciate that from a... Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate that from a, 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 a from a service member. I, I appreciate that from yeah, definitely. I guess it's okay. I don't need to question my masculinity now. That it's. Thank you. Charcoal scrub is the way to go. <laughs> so practice your facial expression in the mirror. Um, if someone hasn't read a ton of Spider-Man books, which uh, which era arc would you put them to? Um, honestly, I don't know. I, I don't know, because I, I haven't read enough, R.C. Scott. Like, when I got back into reading, I got uh, into uh, Nick Spencer's run, which has been pretty good. Uh, but, like, when I was a kid, um, I've, still got, I've still got a few of the books. I was reading Web of Spider-Man, which I believe in Web of Spider-Man is where the Craven, uh, Craven's Last Hunt story uh, all, all came about, uh, all took place there. That's what I used to read when I was a kid, um, was that. <clears throat> But our entertainment going to be unbearable now. The whole X-Men team going to be black. Oh, dude, yeah. Dude, that's that's a whole other conversation. But, yes. Uh, you know, and I was thinking about making a video about that. So maybe I shouldn't even mention it right now. But I'm going to. Because the one thing I want to ask from you guys is, you know, just, and I'm not, you know, like, you know, it's whatever. Because I know we're going to see it. Um, but how long, guys? How long until we see Marvel interject in one of their stories? Hashtag defund the police. Because I know clear back in 2016, was it 2016? In this in the Sam in the Sam Wilson Captain America, we got hashtag not my captain. Because Sam Wilson was Captain America. So my question is to you guys, how long do you think till we get hashtag defund the police in a Marvel comic book? I'm just curious. I want to know your thoughts down there in the comments below. You know I'll read it and review it. That's what I'm here for, guys. That's what you're here for. That's what you come to this channel for. You come to this channel to see comic book reviews and tell you and me to tell you what's in the comic, right? And whether it has, just like I was, just like we were just talk, talking about there a minute ago with the guy who doesn't want to see the representation of his comic books. He knows not to read these two comic books. You know why? Because he came right here. Anyway, guys, uh, yeah, like, and, and that's, and like I said, I'm, that's why I'm reading these comic books. I, like, I don't care, like, if you're doing your own thing, you've got your own comic book, you do what you want to with it, you know? Nobody's coming on my channel telling me what to do, you know? Although, I will tell you that I do my best to listen to my viewers and cater to them, because you guys are the people who watch. You think I watch this trash? I do. No, I'm just kidding. I don't watch back my stuff except for my videos when I'm editing them. But I watch worse channels than mine. I swear. <laughs> oh, man. Gotta work taking me. All right. Take it easy, uh, Maverick. Have a good one. Uh, are you saying Ellen was beating the bush too much? No. Oh, no, man. Fanjecture. I don't know. You know what? I'm taking back 
withdrawing my comments about you and Cap earlier then, dude. You want to be like that about it. Um, Fantastic Four going to be new. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, SpongeBob confirmed gay. I li uh, like we didn't already figure that out. Yeah, right. Oh, I know. Yeah. Like SpongeBob. Like, are you kidding me? Have you seen that cartoon? Come on. Don't mess up my childhood, Irish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. SpongeBob is not gay. They're just trying to virtue signal him into it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't think, I don't think, uh, I, I would think if anything, he's like Deadpool. I'd say he's more like Deadpool where he's pan, where he's pan, definitely. Um, I actually want to see Captain Planet. <laughs> Captain Planet, oh, did somebody say something about Captain Planet? Are they doing that, that Captain Planet stuff? Are they bringing that back? Are they... Sponge, SpongeBob had a, a, a crush on Sandy Squirrel for, yeah, 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 but yeah, that doesn't mean that he's not, you know, Doesn't mean you don't have curiosities. <laughs> Cause he's definitely a curious fellow. But yeah. You gotta like Sandy Squirrel too, right? She was pleasant. <laughs> People keep posting my comments about R and B ain't fired. I'm like, I never said he was fired, but your title says he is. No, I yeah, yeah. yeah. I know that Well, I didn't put a question mark in mine. I didn't put a question mark in mine. People are like you should put a question mark in there. I'm like, all it says is R&B canceled by Campia and Harloff. Is that not what happened? He was he was canceled off the show for a couple days. He's canceled on the other show. And then people saying that, that I said he's fired. I'm like, I never said he's fired. Go through the whole video. I didn't say he was fired. All I did was share my opinions. And somebody in there is like, in the comments, like, I was going to do a whole, I should do a reaction video about it. It's like, oh, you're a liar. You're a liar! And I'm like, I didn't lie about it. All I did was I talked about the, the, the situation. I shared my feelings on it. I didn't... I'm not... Like, dude. <laughs> some Somebody else inboxed me about some weirdo stuff too. And I'm like, bro. I'm not the e-true Hollywood story. You can go check out and look into this stuff for yourself. I'm just here to share my feelings and opinions on it. Okay? Okay? Captain Planet is underrated. There's so much that you could do with Captain Planet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Defund the police of Asia Marvel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marvel is slow this past two weeks. Have no content. I know that... I mean, they, wasn't there books last week? I think there was... Yeah, there was books last week. Um, And then this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then not this week. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, DC, for giving us heavy metal, death metal. You know what I'm talking about. Don't play games. Defunding the police means uh, means more work for the Punisher, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and other vigilante characters out there. Absolutely, Shellback. Absolutely. Um, y'all don't want to. Y'all don't want a first trans family in the MCU. Rita Richards. I'm telling you, Punisher is going to be the defund the police comic. He's going to give up being a venture lance and become a social worker. <laughs> R.C. Scott, you could... R.C. Scott, though. You know what? Uh, uh, as funny as that is, as, as as freaking hilarious as that is, what you're saying there, that last part, uh, the, the first part, you could very well be right because I will say right now, there is no current ongoing Punisher series. The last thing was a mini series, which was Punisher Soviet. The last one was Matthew Rosenberg's run of the Punisher, which I actually thought was pretty damn good, but I could actually see that being the series that comes in and does that. So RC Scott could very well be right. And guys, whether you want to know it, whether you want to believe that or not, I'm telling you, you heard it right here first. On this show right here, this is what you come to here, folks, for R.C. Scott to tell you in my stream that Punisher is going to be the first Marvel comic to feature hashtag defund the police. They'll probably frame it as not defund the police. They'll probably probably be, be like defund the cops or something like that. But it'll be in there. 
And R.C. Scott said it here first. Well, he didn't say it. Well, he, did he say it here first? Because I know I think he said it on Young Ripper uh, 5 9 stream when I asked. I, I put it in the chat for Young Ripper. I, I, don't think, I think he skipped over. I don't think he got it because it gets crazy in his chats. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You could very well be right. Um, no, not the thing. <laughs> that Rita Richards thing, man. That got me. Like, that's just hilarious. I'm impatient waiting for Donna Bex. I know, man. Come on. Just give it to us. Don Cheeto is probably going to return to play Captain Planet. Yeah, that. Yeah, Captain Planet. That'd be great. No, LB. <laughs> no, LB. Please, no. Cheeto was funny in that. Oh, yeah. Uncanny X men. Oh man. I see what you did there, RC Scott. Oh man, that's terrible. Don't do that. I don't do that, RC Scott. No, no, no. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, guys. Uh, to end the show, guys, I want to talk to you guys about something that I was talking a little bit over on the Den of Nerds uh, live this morning. Uh, this morning is there's Axel Alonso has had a pretty big history in comic books. He was like the head guy over at Marvel for a while. Um, I think. I think he's the guy that was there when Marvel comic books kind of started making that change that a lot of people started having problems with. I think he was the guy in charge during those times. Anyway, he started uh, with some with some friends, some partners. This new uh, this new com uh, this new publishing company called AWA Upshot. Um, it's artists, writers, and artisans, and they uh, they they got a handful of people uh, to basically launch these titles that are opening up this whole new world of uh, comic books. It's like a shared universe is what they're doing. They, they put out, they started off with four titles as they launched with four titles. Now these four titles all dropped right before the pandemic hit the world and everything, you know, like I'm talking about in real life. Um, before the pandemic hit, all these dropped uh, right before that, these, these handful of them, the, the first issues of them. And the, it started off with the resistance, which was a very funny because it plays on what's going on in our world with the pandemic that kind of hit the world and it affected millions of people. A lot of people died from it. And a small uh, section of the population were affected by it, but you know, it just lies dormant in their genes. And these other people end up getting these superpowers. And that's kind of what the resistance is all about, is this resistance of you know these people uh, coming together, uh, fighting back against just stuff. Against what's going on in the world, and we can see the nations of the world coming together uh, to find out solutions to deal with what's going on, because they don't know what other things are going on um, with, with with these people that have been affected by this uh, by this viral plague that has been out there. And they just like just like happened in the real world, the, the nations of the world locked down their people, and they are basically all quarantined to their homes and couldn't leave uh, to help prevent the spread of this sickness. Crazy. Crazy stuff, but then they they also got another another uh, title that launched out of out of it called Hotel, written by John Lee's. This is a horror tale. These first two issues are out, and guys, these books are effing great. Okay, I will tell you, this is a great horror series. I love it. These four tales are all kind of interwoven, almost like remember that uh, remember that movie Four Rooms. Remember that? It almost reminds me of that, but more horrorish. Definitely good stuff. Uh, another one uh, by Michael Morisi, Archangel 8. Guys, this series is good as well. This one is almost like a... It almost seems like Goodfellas meets... The, the Punisher? You know, maybe Goodfellas meets The Punisher meets... Like a super like superhero because like like the Punisher in this case is almost like you can see right there he's got the wings and everything, yeah, kind of like that. Great stuff here, great stuff here. Then we get Year Zero by Benjamin Percy. As well, where uh, we can see that like the fallout has kind of happened here, and just I'm telling you, they're they're building this kind of world over here uh, at AWA Upshot with these really good books. They also did Red Border is another book that uh, that, that came out. Uh, as well very good stuff they've also got devil's highway coming out old haunts which i believe was supposed to release this week or last week uh, a book called old haunts they've got another one uh, a couple of others coming out on awa upshots so it's a new up uh, up and coming comic publisher 
one that's definitely got some good titles where they're building this uh, this universe out. And I think you guys might want to check out some of these books. Get out there and read them. And it looks like they're all starting off with short uh, with short series. The Resistance is six issues, where I believe um, uh, Archangel Eight is five issues. Uh, Hotel is four issues. Um, I can't remember uh, what's the the I think Red Border. I want to say that was five issues as well. But they're all coming out with just like, you know, these little miniseries kind of launching off this shared universe. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what they're doing here going forward uh, with these titles. And they're, they're starting off with some pretty good talent over there, guys. Uh, a lot of great, uh, a lot of gr uh, great writers, uh, good artists as well. Great artists just, uh, just kind of building this, this universe. And it's very cool. And if you don't want to buy all of these individual issues, uh, they've been putting out these books called Upshot Now. And I can show you guys these things right here. Um, they've got these, uh, these right here, these Upshot Now books that they've got, that these are all like, uh, collected uh, trade paperbacks, collected editions. But like what's inside of this book is, uh, these books right here, the issue number ones of all these first ones that launched, which is the Resistance, Archangel 8, uh, Red, uh, Red Border and Hotel. And then, uh. You know, then we get into uh, then we get into these next ones, and they have all the same thing. Now it's got the full comic book in there. It's got the full comic book in there. You get to read the full story, but it's in black and white. And it's just like on newsprint. It's just like on newsprint. Um, these are only five bucks. Uh, they may have these at your local comic book shop. Um, and I think some of them even have like uh, like little previews, little excerpts of what's coming up in some of the other issues as well. Um, so they're doing what they can to get these things out there. They, again, these were only five bucks each, and they've got, like I said, four stories in there. Um, so they're so they got some. Uh, they're, they're launching off this this company, and they're doing what they can to push it. They've got they've gathered some talent, and I think they've got some good stuff in there that you might want to definitely check out if you want to read some great indie comic books. Um, so let's see. Uh, RC, I see what she did there. We need an ex cons show, right? Is he actually? caught up is who actually caught up what do you mean um stop punishing us rc, RC scott <laughs> yeah no no like honestly though i think i think rc scott is right there that uh that it very well could be that that's what we're uh that that's what we're going to be seeing um it, it could very well be uh the punisher book that that we're going to be getting it's going to be that first uh that first one out there i just have a feeling rc scott might be right there <laughs> but uh anyway guys uh yeah, uh, let, I think we're going to go ahead and call it a stream there. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. Now, make sure, if you're not, not already, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you click that little bell and all of that good stuff. We're going to have some comic book reviews coming up here on the channel. Um, and make sure you tune in tomorrow. We will be going live tomorrow for the day after comic book the day after new comic book day as well. Um, won't be going live on Friday, but we will have the Trailer Park Live this Friday night. But again, thank you guys so much for being here today. I do greatly appreciate every single one of you for being here today. You all have a very good day. Make sure you smash that like button and make sure that you share this stream with a friend and invite them to come hang out with us here on the 2nd Street Marvel. You all have a very good day. Have a great rest of your week and we'll see you in the next video. Later.